time for our Monday morning grammar phone in. 0500 909 693 is the number to call if you'd like to join us. Pick up the phone and give us a call. 0500 909 693. The question, broadly speaking, is the rules of grammar. Are they there to be observed without any um, interpretation? Are they sacrosanct? Do they, do they stay there? Are they fast? Are they engraved in stone? Or can we be a little bit flexible? Are there rules of grammar that we can bend and perhaps ignore and perhaps break? The rules are there to be broken, aren't they? 0500 is there a particular rule of grammar that is unbreakable, unshakable, that must stay exactly the way it is at all times? Or is there a particular rule of grammar that for you, you're happy for it to be broken? And it needs to be broken, perhaps, to, to enhance the language. 0500 909 With us as ever, our grammarians, Terry Victor is the editor of the New Partridge Dictionary of Slang and Unconventional English. He's the other bloke. Terry, good morning. Oh, I'm the other bloke. Yeah. Hello, Dotton. How are you? I'm very well, thanks so much. Because I, I, I propose to make your life hell tonight. I propose to make as many grammatic errors as I possibly can. I wouldn't even notice. You so, didn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I did, actually, but I thought I'd humour you on that one. <laughs> You're very kind. Neville Gwynn is with us as well. He's the author of Gwynn's Grammar. You would have dream of um, making grammatical errors all through the night, would you, Neville? Uh Terry, uh, so Dotton, good morning to you. And uh, I regard this as possibly the most important program we've ever had. And uh, I never would except when both parties know they're breaking it and it's a joke. Otherwise, no, 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 no. And I shall look forward to elaborating on that in due course. Right. So let's start with why grammar should never, or rules of grammar should never be broken, never. Why? Are the rules of grammar absolutely sacrosanct? Well, the rules have a purpose. And if you break them, either you will be thought by anybody who knows what, what is illiterate, or much more, much worse than that, you can change the meaning without realizing you've changed the meaning, or you can see something written down and you actually do not know what the author has said. I'll just give you one quick example of this. If you were to see in writing, we are having a grammar lesson a grammar discussion which is interesting and you put a comma after the word discussion or you leave it out you dramatically change the meaning and you are either reading or saying something you don't mean if you put the comma in when you don't want to or you leave the comma out when you don't want to it, it actually matters very much and there are i can give you other examples in due course of the same sort of thing happening so you've really got to know when you're on when you're on about ain't that a shame terry ain't that a, oh. a shame it's neither one thing or another, is it? I mean, it's. I, I've got a kind of position on this that's general, and and it, it's. I think it's using it as an excuse because if you criticise the way other people use language, it really is about the laziest form of snobbery I can imagine. The but, way language. Wow, this is this is big stuff. I'm the well, yeah, because language is there to communicate. It isn't there to subjugate. And I'm afraid it, when you say nothing is movable, this all must be perfect or the world will fall to pieces. It, it's a position that is not sustainable. But what is the point of language if when you use language, we don't understand what you mean or there is some confusion as to what you mean? Language surely is for clarity, amongst other things. That surely would be its initial purpose, clarity, communication, understanding. Well, I think communication comes before clarity, in fact, doesn't it? Because clarity is enabled by communication. Do they it's not, not go the hand, other way around. Do they not go hand in hand? They're, they're very closely related. But if you're not communicating the correct message, you know, if you're saying, actually, the engines ain't coming, rather than the Native Americans are on their way here to massacre us all, then the point of your language is totally pointless, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I, and I think you'd have got other parts of that from its context. Language is only one of the means by which we all communicate to each other. And, and I think my, my problem here is that the idea that you have the right way of speaking English beaten into you as a child, and therefore you can do it right all the way through your life, is an appalling thing to be doing. When we're learning it quite naturally, we're making it happen quite naturally. And 
the, the mistakes don't really matter. And so half of the time you don't notice them. I mean, no one picked me up, for instance, when I said neither one thing or another. But they are just little things that really don't hurt when we're talking to each other. I thought you were just quoting Blondie. One thing or another, and then I get you, get you, get ah, you, get no. you. One thing or I another. Neither in front of me. I wasn't playing Blondie games with you, but that was beautifully done. Yeah, I, I like so. your Debbie I a lot. So. We've got Mick in Clapton with us. Good morning. Hello. Hello, Mick. How are you? Hello, Dalton. Yeah, uh, there's actually, there's, I, I told you, call out that there's one thing, but uh, there's two things. I grew up in the East End during the 60s. I can hear that. And there was a lot of slang, and uh, maybe I'm a, just a grumpy old git, but like, uh, there's, I live in Clapton now, and uh, there's two terms that really, really get under my skin. One of them is normally used in a sort of uh, an angry style, which is know what I mean, mate. Yeah. And uh, the other one is in it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. those two terms really, really get under my skin. I'm so glad that you edited the uh, way that you were going to describe how they bother you, because I heard you say the two terms that really get under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But um, when they say, you know what I mean, mate, do, do you know what they mean? Uh, it's it's just it's just common terminology around here. I know, I mean, but you do uh, know what they mean, don't they? And that's what they are. Now, uh, yeah, I but, knew exactly what you meant when you said but, it. But, but look, when it's said in a different tone, yeah, you know, and you know uh, what I mean, mate. You know what I mean, mate. Right. Uh, but but it's in it that really gets under my skin. That does. But but you you know what they mean when they say it, don't you? Don't yeah, you? I do. You know, what the, do they, they mean? Because I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm probably contradicting myself because I can't help how I speak. Yeah, I try to speak the Queen's English, but but I can't help how, where I was brought up. I but, have um, heard the Queen speak, and um, it's fair to say that neither of us speak the way she does. Fair to say, mate. Can I interrupt? Can I interrupt here? If you must. Queen's English does not mean. How the Queen speaks. It is no, a technical know, term. For instance, know, King George I yeah. uh, could not speak English at all, never spoke English, yeah. but there still was the expression King's English. And so, you, you, here, you, you just got to get things right. Now, hang on a second. Hang on a second. In grammar, remember with grammar, you were saying that if we don't use the correct grammar, we may not we may misunderstand what is meant. And now you're telling us, I know it's not about grammar, but now you're saying it's okay to say the Queen's English when actually the Queen doesn't speak English at all. That surely would be a reductio ad absurdum, wouldn't it? No, because Queen's English doesn't mean what you say it means. It, it, it is a technical term That's meaning standard English. And, 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 and the, whether the Queen herself speaks it or not, she's sometimes the Queen herself or the King does not speak King's English. But the point I was trying to make was... <laughs> The point I was trying to make, now, with all due respect, is if the phrase, the Queen's English, does not have to mean what it means, then why should correct grammar or incorrect grammar have to mean what it doesn't mean? Or do You know what I mean. But I know exactly what you mean, <laughs> but, but the gr grammatical terms and linguistic terms have a meaning. If you look up Queen's English in the dictionary, you'll actually see what it means, presumably. And it's the same with the grammatical terms. There is a question of get, getting it right. If, if, if you say Queen's English meaning how the Queen speaks, you've got your term wrong. And you, you should get it right. You should know what Queen's English means. Terry, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I, 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 uh, I, I heard you say, no, I mean, a couple of times. Yeah, you know well, what I mean. <laughs> no, I, I don't say, you know what I mean. I say, no, I mean. School, we were taught how to speak right, how to write yeah. correctly. No, I mean, and that was part of our English lessons. But like, yeah. as the years go by, you go on the streets and you pick up slang. And uh, unless you go to uh, one of these people that teaches you how to speak correctly, it's hard to erase your upbringing. That's very true. That's and, very true. Um, you know, but do, I, 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 does it does it matter to speak a little bit of? Um, it's not so much slang, but remember, well, it's, it's, it's just. It, but we don't all just, know uh, the rules of grammar, do we? We don't all know the rules of grammar. I know. And no, when no, we I speak, do. and we've broken one or two of the rules, does it really matter, Mick? Does it I really think matter? 
I think I'm just a grumpy old git dot. No, no, <laughs> me too. Don't get me wrong. Does it really matter when somebody has broken the rules of grammar? That's the question for our phone in tonight. And thanks a lot for calling, Mick. Thanks for yeah, being yeah, the first one. Bye, mate. Yeah, bye, mate. Um, does it really matter when somebody breaks the rules of grammar? And when does it matter? Is there a particular instance when it really, really does matter? And a particular instance when no, oh, it doesn't matter at all. And here's my other point. Uh, Terry, that sometimes in the breaking, could we argue in the breaking of the rules of grammar, because mm. there are rules to be had yeah. and rules to be broken. And is there a case to argue that we necess necessarily have to break rules of grammar to enhance the language, to give it a bit of color, but also to underline the rules of grammar, if you see what I mean. We, we, we need rules of grammar as a, as a baseline, as a starting point, yeah, without question. Uh, otherwise, here's the, here's the word that uh, tends to cause problems, the language wouldn't evolve. We, we need a place to grow from, but the language is not complete, and it will never be complete, and it won't suit everybody. I mean, I, I love what Mick just said with the, you know what I mean, mate? Because it's all to do with the intonation. It's not to do with the words. The words actually don't matter. It's all to do with the stress and the intonation and how it's said, if it's said aggressively or just as a throwaway or a filler. And that's what so much of our language does. It, it's, the mu it's the dots of the music. The music is in how we say the things. And if we haven't got enough things to say, well, we find ways to say them. We make up ways to say them. And it, you know, if you let a rule of grammar fall between the cracks, it doesn't matter. Uh, Neville, it ain't what you say, it's the way that you say it. Go on. Say what? No, that's that's basically what Terry was just saying there. It ain't what you say. It's, it's not ad adhering, yeah. adhering blindly to the rules that are the important things um, in communication, in speaking, in language, but it's the way you say things, essentially. As before, there are, everybody used to have and I think it was Mick. But this is two, 2015. Two, two, two languages. 2015. One, one was the, the, how he would mumble along in private, and the other is if you're talking or writing in any sort of... But we can't keep harking back to those dark ages. In 2015, it ain't what you say, it's the way that you say it. And the problem is that what you do if you don't learn proper English, you impoverish your ability to speak and to think. Hang on. If and, you and don't English, learn proper English, was, was that correct, Terry? I suppose it probably was correct if you have Neville's education. But I mean, I threw a mistake in you know, to the last time I was speaking and Neville didn't spot it. Excuse me, gentlemen. Everybody used to have Neville's education. Neville's education ought to be brought back for everybody like it used to be. What you're doing Everybody creative, didn't get to go to Eton, Neville. Come, come. No, everybody no, 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 no. didn't get to go to Eton. So excuse not everybody me, had Neville's education. Excuse me. Everybody in grammar used to have that education no matter where they were at school. And this is the big difference today so that you actually learned Two they also used to have the cane at schools. It doesn't mean it was a good well, thing. Been, and now that's just totally irrelevant. You, 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 I dare say you did, but I'm saying that it was everybody used to therefore know how to think clearly and to speak clearly and accurately, exactly, and to communicate clearly. And now that can't be done. And it we are does happen because people result. do manage somehow to make the world go round by speaking to each other they and communicating clearly. They don't manage, they get things wrong, there are misunderstandings, that's the problem, Terry. There yeah, are misunderstandings. There have always been misunderstandings. There are no misunderstandings, misunderstandings if you always actually... language-based. And we wouldn't have had so many wars in our history if there hadn't been misunderstandings. And I'm that's when the language... Misunderstandings which were in, in speaking and communication. We know other misunderstandings are possible, but in speaking and communication, you have unnecessary understand misunderstandings, which can be disastrous. I'll just, can I give you one example? Please do. If you were to say, um, I do not like him doing that, or I do not like his doing that, you are quite dramatic to change the meaning according to which particular um, him or his pronoun you are using, uh, because you, you are changing the verb from a gerund into a participle. It's, it's a dramatic change of the meaning. Now, this happens all the time. And in order to get things right and to 
understand things right, you've got to know what your grammar Look, is. I and do not is, like green eggs and ham. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like green eggs and ham. But Andrew says, people saying must of and could of <laughs> is the worst breaking of grammatical rules. That's the rules, it's fine to break. Why does my phone in Microsoft Word want to correct ain't to ain't? He says, you know, ain't it's, without it's, an apostrophe to ain't with an apostrophe. Sorry. It's a tragedy if you do. If you oh, hold on, hold on. But what are the rules that govern that uh, incorrect grammar then? What's the rules that says it must be, must have, and could have? What What are those rules, Neville? Do, does it have a name? Uh, well, it's, it's just illiterate. No, the, the I know, word, but we're talking about the rules, and I'm saying that there aren't always rules. It's just a convention, isn't it? After uh, a certain amount of time, we say, oh, that's the way it's said, and we accept no, that, no, but no, most of us don't know the rules. Using, well, in the case, you're using a preposition when you should be using a verb. It could be more dramatic than that. It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. it, it, you, you, you use a, a, a verb when you need, mean a verb and a preposition but, when you mean a verb. But you could quite legitimately could have of as an alternate spelling for have. Because that's what it's used as. Because that's say, how it sounds. You say you can't Must spell. Have, would you have. say you cannot no. spell the word H A V E. No, I mean honestly. No, it's the reverse etymology. Because but the I, way it's pronounced becomes apostrophe V E. That they, gets sounded as of, and therefore the word of seems to replace it in speech. No, no, Terry, you're yeah. being slightly disingenuous here because people that I've heard that say must of and could of mm -hmm. they believe that that is the correct it is of they're not trying to spell have incorrectly they actually believe that the grammar is he must of done that he could of done that they don't believe that it's have a, a different way of saying have and you're not gonna no, find i'm saying that that's word. how the etymology grew up not not how it not how we believe it to be, but it's that's wrong. How we, how we arrived at it. No, but why, it's clearly it it made a well, mistake. That's, have that's the question. And not OF. Yeah, there's but, no real reason when you get down to the basic of it. There's no reason why it should be spelt the way we spell it. But uh, apart from the spelling, but apart from the spelling, the actual grammatical context, which is as um, as uh, Neville was saying a moment ago, a preposition rather than a verb, mm -hmm. that. There's no excuse for that, is there? But that isn't being used as that at that point. No, it but, is being used as an alternate spelling for the sound. No, but I'm saying that it's not. I'm saying that it's not being used as an alternative spelling for the sound. It's being used as a replacement or uh, uh, as yeah, just... The alternative, uh, the, the alternative that was derived by the sound has become a replacement. That's no, used in so many people's it's not even a replacement. It would be a replacement if people knew what the correct term was. But it's not a replacement if they don't know what the correct term is. Well, it's no, a misappropriation, no. isn't it? No, no because you, you use so it. many words that have replaced other words in, in your vocabulary without knowing where they've come from, Don. Everybody does. We don't know the etymology and history of our words. We take words on trust. But we learn words, words by but speech. Part of your education is, is to find out what the etymology is. And you're, you're basically no, saying it doesn't not. matter if you say 2 plus 2 equals 5. You're, you're saying that language has no meaning. It, it, it's insane. It's, it's, it's also, not, it still uh, means the same thing. Many words have many uses, that, and this is a, a different use, a very casual use, and not a, quote, correct use of of, but it works and serves perfectly well for perfectly logical reasons. I, I, mean, I wouldn't put logical, anyone down for say, saying you're, you're, I would have done that. that. You're, you're, gosh, you're, you're saying that logic doesn't come into it. There's no logic in getting a, a, a word right. That, that, that you actually literally they use, a, got the just, word wrong, you use a word that doesn't mean what it what what, what you think it means. It's, it's insane, Terry. It, it's no, it's subversive. Lots of words have alternate meanings. You cleave to them. You cleave them apart. You've got this opportunity with language to do all sorts of things. And getting uptight about would have. How did I spell it when I said that? What I did was spell W O U. LD apostrophe VE, but it sounds perfectly well as OF. So OF can stand. No, that's not. That's not. That's not the case. Like Terry, sorry. even I can hear that. Look, would have is an abbreviation of would have, but would of, would of, would of, could of, is a completely different formulation. 
from would have and could have. I don't have. know if it was spelled because phonetically by someone like Dickens. I think you'd find that's how it came down. The, 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 the spelling is one thing, but I'm saying the meaning of it. Would well, the meaning is still had. Have, no, it's not at all. Of and have are two different meanings, isn't it? Have, I would suggest, was a kind of a, is it a possessive verb? Is that, is that what it's called, Neville? Is it a possessive verb? I, I want to interrupt you. I think there's only one solution for Terry, um, uh, Dotton, and that's just this once, never again, bring back the cane. <laughs> Oh, you see, you want to beat grammar into people, and that's <laughs> no, one no, of the things wrong you. with you. No, no, come on, no you. violence, no violence. Only into you. No I, violence. I, I teach but other children grammar without the cane, no, but I didn't carry no, one no. I should no violence. It was particularly painful for me when the headmaster used to tell you to touch your toes, and I could only touch my calves. So I, I know what a good thrashing means. Try this one, though. Try this one, uh, Neville. Um, you made me cry. Yeah, you okay with that? Yeah. When you said goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, you okay with that? I'm fine, yes. Ain't that a shame? <laughs> My tears feel like rain. Ain't that a shame? You're the one to blame. How do you feel about that? Ain't that a shame? Well, look, if you know what you're doing and the other person knows what you're doing and you're clearly joking, I've no objection at all. What I, worry, what I worry about is when you say could of without realising that you've made a ridiculous, uh, un unreasonable blunder. I don't mind it. If you want to say ain't and everybody knows it's a joke, everybody knows it's being done on purpose, fine by me. But you don't hear so many blunders when you're listening, when you're speaking to people. The I blunders guess. aren't what you're listening don't, to. Don't, don't speak on my behalf. I, I suspect well, I, I, I can, I can evidence it from earlier. Earlier on, I said something fell between the cracks. You didn't hear the blunder. Oh, did I not? You can't fall between cracks. You can fall through cracks. If you fall between the cracks, you've landed on the solid. But if you're Quite not rough. paying attention, it doesn't matter because what I said made sense as you understood it. I, I must admit, I wasn't listening closely yeah, enough. No, 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 neither was I. Neither was I. But it's, it's, it's not quite the point, though, Terry. And you're being slightly naughty tonight. I told, I told you I was going to. I know, I know. No, it's not quite he, the point. He, he deserved the hate. <laughs> Look, I said no <laughs> violence, please. Look, it's only grammar. But um, what we, we shouldn't lose sight of is whether you have to observe to every rule of grammar or not. You clearly, Neville, as much as your position is old school, you feel that there are times when we can break the rules of grammar. Well, ain't that a shame you're happy to break the rules of grammar for that, aren't you? Only because, only because it's a joke. I mean, it's, it's not a it's, joke. You're allowed to say two plus two equals five. It's a not joke. a joke. It's not a joke. It's people it's, say, ain't that a shame. And you, in you know that context... You know they're doing it knowing they're getting it wrong for effect. The I've joke... Got, would the, it's a song or a poem if you like the joke would yeah. be if pat boone who covered it um after fats domino wrote it if pat boone had got his way because he was an english student at columbia university if he'd got his way and sang correctly correct grammar because he didn't want to be exposed amongst his classmates as somebody who sang incorrect grammar if he'd got his way and said isn't that a shame isn't that a shame? That would have been the joke, wouldn't it? That we would have laughed him out of, you know, the, the recording studio if he had done that. So sometimes, what I'm trying to say to you is, sometimes the language is dependent for whether it be for color or texture on a little Ooh. bit of breaking the rules, isn't it? He, he, when he says, ain't that the shame, they're doing it for purpose. Either they're imitating bad grammar on purpose or something. Everybody knows what's going on. That is my point. Whereas when you say could of, could of there's somebody who doesn't know what's going on. How do you know? It, Everybody knows what you mean when you say could of. Everybody no, 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 knows. No, the person who says it, the person who says it almost certainly actually doesn't know what the correct usage is. No, he, 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 doesn't know, he doesn't know the correct usage, but he knows the correct meaning. Yeah. Which is, you I've, could have done something. Even though he doesn't know the correct usage, he knows the correct meaning. We all know it. You're, you're missing my point. With, with, with ain't, those that did it they, uh, actually knew what they were doing. When someone says could of, he doesn't know what he's doing, normally speaking. 
0500 So the debate this morning is all about the rules of grammar. Is it ever acceptable to break the rules of grammar? Are those rules of grammar sacrosanct and unbreakable or unshakable? Or are the rules there to be broken so that we can have fun with our language, so that we can express ourselves? Surely that's what language is about, or is it? Give us your thoughts, please. If there's one particular rule that should never be broken, tell us what that is. Is there one particular rule that it's okay to break? It should always be broken, maybe. I mean, they tell you it, I before E except after C. They break that one every single time. I don't even know if there's a single word which is I before E except after C. Um, anyway, g g you tell me. Are there rules in the language to be broken, or is there one rule that should never, ever, ever be broken? 